local talent is there to make all this happen. And that's why you're all here. And I appreciate your, your time and your effort in making this happen. Because climate change is a serious, serious event in this part of the world. Our island is now at the global forefront ensuring our planet's sustainable future. The diverse thoughts, perspectives, and experiences of, of our island are represented here today in all of you. You contain the imagination and creativity for the necessary innovation and collective action that we need to achieve, to achieve a sustainable future. Part of what we in the university and everyone in this room need to do is to help people to understand that these are interconnected goals. If we can develop more food security uh, with aquaculture, agriculture, um, to provide more of our own food and our own um, uh, uh, things for sustainability, it'll help with poverty, it will help with clean water, it'll help with many of the, th I mean, really everything. Align what you're doing in your agency or in your organization with the goals. Part of it is an exchange so that we can see what each other are doing to add value to what is going on, to identify some indicators uh, that we can, uh, some measurements of success as we drive towards um, adopting and meeting the goals of the United Nations. Confidate and welcome to the Guam Green Growth Action Framework signing event. I'm your MC, Lawrence Twiddell, the Guam Green Growth Coordinator from the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability. Thank you for joining us. Today, the Guam Green Growth Initiative will present the G3 Action Framework, which will be signed into action by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio, launching a 10-year strategy to develop tangible solutions to sustainability challenges and contribute to a green economy for the island region. Before that happens, we'll have a presentation on the history of the G3 initiative, the G3 action framework development process, and G3's next steps. The G3 action framework and G3 initiative incorporate building and maintaining local, regional, and global alliances to accelerate achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030. So we are thrilled that our partners in sustainability, including the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub, the Global Island Partnership, and the Micronesia Challenge 2030 can celebrate with us today. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge and welcome our honored guests and speakers. Dr. Thomas Christ, President of the University of Guam. Honorable Lou Leon Guerrero, Governor of Guam. Honorable Joshua Tenorio, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. His Excellency David Kabua, President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Honorable David Ige, Governor of Hawaii. Honorable Tina Munya Barnes, Speaker of the Guam Legislature. Kate Brown, Executive Director of the uh, Global Island Partnership. Celeste Connors, Executive Director of the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub. Now I'd like to welcome Dr. Thomas Christ, the President of the University of Guam and G3 Working Group member to give introductory remarks. Good day and good morning. Thank you and good afternoon to those uh, farther away. Uh, Welcome to this uh, Guam Green Growth um, signing ceremony and particular uh, welcome and thanks to uh, our governor and our lieutenant governor and President Kabua and Governor Ige and uh, our speaker, uh, Tina Munya Barnes. And uh, we're very pleased to have this great commitment to this important uh, collaborative effort. So thank you very much. And uh, the University of Guam and our Center for Island Sustainability led by uh, Dr. Austin Shelton uh, is the support agency for this Guam-wide uh, uh, initiative. And so it's one of several uh, projects that the university takes on on behalf of all of Guam that's beyond our basic mission, um, but it uh, is a really great way for us to leverage our expertise of our faculty and staff, our students, the energy and, and enthusiasm of our students, um, that that's been uh, a, a way to um, to really make the uh, sponsorship of the uh, Guam Green Growth more effective. So we're really pleased to be able to do this. 
And um, I think it's also important to, for all of us to be thinking about the way that Guam Green Growth presents us an opportunity to uh, combine our effective responses to the multiple crises. And this year, 2020, I think we're all focused on how much this year is, is making us pay attention to a series of crises. So we have a, obviously this, the crisis of climate that we're uh, particularly focused on here, but we also obviously have a, a crisis of public health. We have an economic crisis. We also are facing a crisis of democracy, not only in this country, but, uh, but in other other places in the world. And we're also facing a crisis of the international order and our ability to collectively respond to all of the crises that I've just mentioned. So the Guam Green Growth Initiative allows us um, that model to be a model for combining our responses to this. So as we all sit now, you know, six months into this uh, health crisis, we uh, are often saying, well, when we get out of this, I'm going to X, Y, and Z. So this provides us the opportunity to think that we'll be building our way better out of this, uh, out of this crisis. So I think we have a role to play, not only to address the climate crisis, but also the economic crisis and, and the crisis involving our collective action. We, in the uh, organization and across the Pacific, um, are able to demonstrate the ability to collaborate effectively together and to positively and optimistically imagine a future that is better than the one that, that we left behind. So um, we in the Pacific, I think in many ways, our islands, our island countries and our island territories are at the epicenter of the climate crisis. And in many ways we uh, can model our way out of this. So thank you to all of our distinguished guests and everyone involved in this uh, signing ceremony and for advancing this important cause. Thank you, President Kreis. Now I'd like to turn it over to Governor of Guam, Lou Leon Guerrero. Thank you very much and good morning, good afternoon to some of you and uh, a warm, warm half a day from our beautiful uh, island of Guam. I'd like to just uh, give my uh, hello to Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, to our speaker, uh, Tina Munya Barnes, to our uh, distinguished guests, um, Governor David Ige, a colleague of mine, President David Kabua, of course, from the um, RMI, and uh, also Kate Brown and uh, uh, Celeste Connors. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Austin Shelton for his leadership, for his persistence, for his tenacity in uh, bugging me for money, which is very important to make our successful uh, uh, green economy and to make sure our island here is clean and, our, and we have a uh, environment that we can um, uh, give to our future uh, generation. As we have heard again and again during the course of this pandemic, we are truly living in unparalleled times. Not only are we plagued by a ruthless virus, we are plagued by social injustice. We are plagued by economic uncertainty and we are plagued by natural disasters as a result of climate change. COVID-19 is not only affecting the health of our people and economy, but the health of our whole planet as well. Many have said that this pandemic has been a conduit for the earth to reset itself. In some ways, this would seem to be true. Air quality has drastically improved because of a substantive decrease in travel. Findings by the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air show that China's carbon dioxide emissions were reduced 25% because of strict measures taken to contain the coronavirus and severely limit movement. When India instituted a nationwide curfew on March 22nd, that action led to the lowest average level of nitrogen dioxide pollution recorded in the spring. Satellite data also showed a drop in nitrogen dioxide emissions in Italy's northern region after their isolation uh, measures were implemented. 
However, we must also acknowledge that COVID-19 has forced us to shift our resources and many important environmental programs and policies have taken a backseat. Work to address climate change from research to installing clean energy has been stalled. Many recycling programs throughout the nation have halted because of potential transmission risk and Italy banned infected residents from sorting their waste. Additionally, a number of corporations have paused their disposable bag bans and shifted to relying on single use plastics. Many food and beverage establishments are no longer accepting reusable containers. Even the medical response to health emergencies reveal how unsustainable our current process is. A majority of personal protective equipment is single use and we are generating a significant amount of medical waste. It seems every step forward is followed by two steps back, but these are important lessons for us to learn. Sustainability is highly dependent on innovation. Identifying issues with our current system allows us to make the necessary changes. For example, knowing that there is a global shortage of PPEs and aware of their single use, we are currently procuring a machine that sanitizes PPEs, which means our frontliners can use them multiple times. We are also faced with another problem, and that is self-sufficiency. As an island, we are naturally protected through our geography. We have the ability to monitor travel, and it's easier for us to contain these types of viruses. However, this pandemic has shown us how dependent we are on the rest of the world. While, they, while this interconnectedness offers tremendous benefits, it also leaves us vulnerable. What happens to other countries affects us too. It happened in the 90s when Japan experienced a recession and our tourism halted. It happened in the, in the 2000s when the world was experiencing an economic crisis and it's happening now. These highlight the importance of the G3 framework and the need for a 10-year strategy to develop tangible solutions to sustainability challenges, because if not now, when? When Lieutenant Governor Tenorio and I launched the Guam Green Growth Working Group last year, we knew we would not see results right away, that we wouldn't be able to witness the fruit of our labor in the near future. But we also knew to reap the harvest, we must plant the seeds. To preserve Guam for tomorrow, we need to start today. As we sign the G3 Action Framework, Guam is ready to take our place at the global forefront of island sustainability. This year marks the start of the Decade of Action, a critical 10-year window to act on the most significant global sustainability challenges before 2030. We are proud to be taking local action to achieve global impact. On Guam, we have always had a special connection to the land and waters that have sustained us and provided a home. We have a unique opportunity to develop our current resources and ensure most of the things we truly need can come from our land and sea. From the beginning of my administration, I have supported increasing opportunities and resources for local farmers to expand. Sustainability is not just about decreasing our consumption, but increasing our resilience to weather the next storm. However, Guam cannot do it alone. Our small island brothers and sisters cannot do it alone. The data has shown that as a global community, we have barely made a dent in addressing the triple planetary crisis of climate change, loss of nature and pollution. And we don't have to look far to see the dangers we face if we don't do anything now. But the fact is the biggest contributor to climate change have not done their share of the work. And we, small island nations, will be the ones to feel the effects. 
the future of our island is dependent on sustainability, developing our land and resources. It should not take a global health crisis for us to accept this as fact but we need to learn from our current experiences and decide that our way of life may be present, but it should not be our future. I am very honored to be part of this historical signing of the G3 Action Framework. It is very important and impactful that our Pacific leaders stand together in full force for a clean blue Pacific, for a sustainable green economy, and in support of our G3 Action Framework. I'd like to also especially recognize President Christ for his support and his efforts in leading this challenge with us. Thank you and Sidzu Usmasi for your presence and I look forward to the signing of our Action Framework. Thank you, Governor Leon Guerrero and President Kreis for your remarks and leadership in the G3 initiative and your dedication to sustainability of our island. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Austin Shelton, the director of the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and G3 Working Group co-chair to present on the history of the G3 initiative. I'll join in and give an overview of the G3 action framework. Hi, today, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning here in Guam. Um, we are really pleased to be launching the G3 Action Framework. It's the most comprehensive plan ever created to achieve a sustainable future for Guam. And so aligned with the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the intent of the G3 initiative is to cultivate an ecosystem for transformative action to achieve a more sustainable, prosperous, and equitable future for our island. In later presentations, you'll hear from our partners um, about the story of how islands are helping islands, from the Micronesia Challenge here in our region over to the Aloha Plus Challenge and back again with Hawaii Green Growth sharing their internationally recognized Aloha Plus dashboard with us. As the governor mentioned, G3 places Guam at the global forefront of leadership in island sustainability. Last year, Guam joined the Local 2030 Islands Network as a founding member of the 70, as a founding member of the Local 2030 Islands Network. Uh, and this was during the 74th United Nations General Assembly and Climate Week in New York. And so Guam is now united with islands around the world in advancing the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through locally informed and culturally driven strategies. And islanders are working with islanders to scale innovative values-based and resilient sustainability solutions. And we thank Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub and the Global Island Partnership for chairing this network. Also in September of last year, Governor Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio promulgated Executive Order 2019-23, creating uh, what became eventually a 97-member G3 working group, and it consists of government, academia, private sector, nonprofit, uh, and youth partners to transition Guam toward a sustainable future. The executive order assigned the facilitation of the G3 working group to us here at the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability, and we're honored to have this responsibility. And Lauren is going to share a little bit more about um, how this framework uh, was developed and how it will move going forward. Thanks, Dr. Shelton. I've been working closely with the G3 Working Group since January to develop the G3 Action Framework. In the G3 Action Framework, we incorporate all 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which we have put into five categories of action. The framework was developed by 97 working group members, representing 82 local agencies and organizations with hundreds of goals, objectives, and action items. In January 2020, the G3 Working Group convened for the first time to create the G3 Action Framework. The G3 Working Group co-chairs, advising facilitator, and I designed the framework development process and oriented the working group to that process. The working group was divided into eight teams. Seven teams addressed clusters of the SDGs that were similar in focus to develop the sub-frameworks and one team was formed to facilitate the public engagement and data collection once the framework was completed. From February to March, the teams met to develop local goals, objectives, and action items with metrics to track progress. When the COVID-19 pandemic reached the island, the working group members paused to address immediate concerns. The G3 co-chairs, advi advising facilitator, and I met virtually to discuss the framework drafts and next steps before scheduling a reconvening meeting. 
In July, the working group reconvened virtually and was restructured into five teams to facilitate more strategic collaboration to achieve the G3 goals. We also added several members, including youth ambassadors, for a total of 97 members. The teams now based on the five categories of action met virtually from July to September to complete their team frameworks, which they finalized and submitted by September. The G3 co-chairs and I compiled their sub-frameworks into one G3 action framework document for approval by the governor and lieutenant governor, which will be, which will be signed into action today. Now I'll give a snapshot of the five categories of action in the G3 action framework. For more details on the framework, please visit the G3 page on the UOG CIS website. The first is healthy and prosperous communities. The main projects here are increasing food security and accessibility to local nutritious food with community gardens, aquaculture, and sustainable agriculture, and creating an environment for innovative cottage industries that can help us reduce reliance on imports and reduce waste generation. Next is Educated, Capable, and Compassionate Island. The main projects here are improving graduation rates, developing supplemental curricula and service learning opportunities that focus on locally relevant topics related to the SDGs, and improving accessibility to education and workforce development trainings. Next, we have Sustainable Homes, Utilities, and Transportation. The main projects here are improving and greening public transportation, increasing renewable energy, improving water quality standards and delivery, and reducing our island's waste. Next, we have thriving natural resources. The main projects here are achieving the Micronesia Challenge 2030 goals, protecting and effectively managing our fisheries, and ramping up watershed restoration and conservation of our forests. Next, we have sustainable alliances. Achieving these ambitious sustainable development goals by 2030 would be impossible if done without alliances. So our main projects here are to become more engaged in local, regional, international, and global partnerships and forums in order to enhance our efforts to have a more sustainable, equitable, and prosperous future. Finally, we have the public engagement and G3 dashboard team. In order to track our progress, the working group selected metrics to measure the success of each goal, which will be displayed on the G3 website with the G3 dashboard, which is coming soon from our friends in Hawaii Green Growth. Now I'll turn the presentation back over to Dr. Shelton to go over the G3 next steps. Thank you very much, Lauren. So uh, going forward from um, the signing framework today, this has really been a consolidation of all the goals, uh, metrics, objectives that were submitted by all of the 97 working group members. Everything was folded into one document and uh, that's what has been presented to the governor today. So the next steps are that the governor will chair our G3 biannual meetings. We'll have the Lieutenant Governor and myself co-chairing a G3 steering committee. Uh, where we'll work to identify priority and high impact opportunity projects going forward. And we're going to be implementing um, some of these action items. We are also going to be establishing the G3 dashboard and track progress. And you'll hear a little bit more about this from our friends at Hawaii Green Growth that will be sharing this dashboard with us. And going forward, we'll have lots of opportunities to adapt and adjust the framework um, as we move forward with the implementation. And just a, a few quick highlights of um, the types of activities that we are starting to leverage and work towards um, contributing to the action framework from our Center for Island Sustainability. Um, here's one. We have an example that will help take us beyond trash cleanups on the island by, dis, uh, by developing some solutions to waste, waste issues. So we have um, G3 currently creating a circular economy makerspace and innovation hub at the Chamorro Village. This will be a place where entrepreneurs can gather in a makerspace filled with tools and equipment to transform waste products into marketable products using 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC routers, heat presses that can turn discarded banana trees into wallets, plastics into tiles, bricks and trinkets, uh, taking beetle nut palms and turning them into plates to offset styrofoam, discarded lumber into tables and trophies, and, and so much more. What's important is that um, in a time of business closures and rising unemployment, G3 will help give our people an ownership role 
in the new green economy and in a transition to a cleaner and more sustainable Guam. Uh, we also have um, some aquaculture and aquaponics projects that we're leveraging with the help of our Sea Grant program, the Guam Economic Development Authority, and our experts at the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. Uh, we'll be creating demonstration projects around the island and um, teaching more people how to increase food security for us all. Um, and we'll also be doing food security work with uh, community gardens, community food gardens throughout the island. And we have a new social worker that will be assisting um, connecting houseless and impoverished and at-risk communities with these, um, with these efforts and with social services um, component combined. And um, finally, one other example is uh, a Guam Green Commitment Program where we'll be able to engage businesses and other organizations in the commitment to sustainable development goals through a badge program. And we're excited to be rolling these all out as the G3 um, team and working with all the G3 working group members to move these things forward. Uh, and as Lauren mentioned earlier, we have the framework in its um, whole form available on our website. So we invite you to, to take a look at this uh, later today after our signing event. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here, and thank you to the hard work of all of our working group members. Thank you, Dr. Shelton, for presenting the history and future of the G3 initiative. Now I'd like to welcome His Excellency David Kabua, President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Yahweh and Ahwade, everyone from the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Honorable Governor Liu, Leon Correro, and Honorable Student and Governor Joshua Tenorio. Thank you for inviting me to share some messages that I hope are of great importance to our island people with respect to sustainability and climate change. The greatest threat to our survival and development as nations. I wish to also send greetings of Yahweh and acknowledge the presence of Honorable David Ike, Governor of the State of Hawaii, Honorable Tina Munya Barnes, Speaker of the Guam Legislature, Dr. Thomas Price, President of the University of Guam, and all the presenters and partners alike on the significant signing event of Guam Green Growth Action Framework. I wish to take this time to congratulate and commend the government of Guam's efforts in pursuing a greener future by recently launching the G3 initiative to develop tangible solutions to sustainability challenges and contribute to a green economy for the island region. As a fellow Micronesian, I am proud to see our sisters and brothers of the region setting a perfect example in addressing the issue of sustainability. RMI joins and supports these efforts through our own initiatives, such as the recently established projected area legislation to underpin our international goals under the Micronesia Challenge 2030. This will conserve 50% of nearshore coastal waters and marine resources, and 30% of land resources along with other goals. RMI's commitment is enshrined in the Raymond National Conservation Plan and is operationalized through the support of the GEF Star Ridge to Reef programmatic approach. Ultimately, we hope this will ensure that this and the next generation can continue to enjoy the riches of our islands. However, we can only conserve so much before we must address the impending threat of climate change that is sweeping across the world and impacting our region with devastating consequences. Climate change not only affects the environment, it also affects the island's economic welfare, cultural practices, ecological health, and social empowerment. 
the quality of life for the Pacific will be disastrous if we do not act now. Governments must continue to encourage new ideas and ensure to address this issue. In the RMI, we are doing as much as we can to ensure our survival. We were the first to submit an improved nationally determined contribution, the climate plans that Paris Agreement signatories committed to update every five years that would ensure we begin to curb and limit our own carbon contribution. To ensure we must meet these goals, we are implementing the RMI electricity roadmap. We are also now working towards developing our national adaptation plan, a plan set to alleviate the pressures of the changing climate, a plan that we hope will help us remain at our rightful home and continue living as proud Marshallese. We are also hoping that through our strengthened collaboration and coordination efforts, internally linking to regional and international processes in addressing climate change impacts where we are placing emphasis on capacity development and ensuring effective flow of climate financing to ensure sustainability and our people to remain in our islands. We can no longer wait on the world to provide solution of our growing environmental crisis. We must plan and initiate our own innovative solutions. As a fellow champion of climate change efforts, the Republic of the Marshall Islands supports the Guam Green Growth Initiative and is ready to provide assistance. The RMI will continue its commitment to pursue a greater economy and combat the threat of climate change. Moldada, thank you very much. Thank you, President Kabua. We are honored you could join us today and thank you for your commitment to the Micronesia Challenge 2030 goals and island sustainability. Now I'd like to welcome Honorable David Ige, Governor of Hawaii. Aloha. Mahalo to my friend and colleague, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio for the opportunity to join this important event virtually all the way from Hawaii. I am honored to be joining today's leaders in celebrating the launch of the G3 Action Framework, Guam's Green Growth Strategy to develop local sustainable solutions to achieve a green growth recovery. We are delighted by the launch and significant progress of Guam Green Growth, a sister effort to our work in Hawaii through, through the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub on the Aloha Plus Challenge to implement the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The world is confronted with significant challenges and COVID-19 is a reminder that as a globalized society, our actions have a direct impact on each other. As islands, we also see the impacts of climate change and sea level rise in a real way, from hurricanes to wildfires, coral bleaching, king tides and flooding rains. These impacts are happening each and every day. We see the opportunity to address these challenges through collective action and a, a lens of sustainability and equity through the sustainable development goals, which can help us emerge from the pandemic stronger and more resilient. So as island economies, Sustainability is not simply a goal, it's a responsibility, or as we say here in Hawaii, it is our kuleana. We are connected to everything that we do, connected as a family, connected to our neighbors, 
and connected to our environment. Knowing this, we must go beyond merely caring for what exists now. We must protect the environment for our children and their future. And as islands, we can lead the way for the rest of the world as they come to realize that our home, planet Earth, is an island for all of us, and island innovation can lead the way to global solutions. That's why last week, I was delighted to launch the nation's first statewide voluntary local review of Hawaii's sustainability commitment to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through our Aloha Plus Challenge with other US leaders during the 75th United Nations General Assembly. Our voluntary local review, which includes the work of our counties, businesses, and community, is based on six years of data tracking on the Aloha Plus dashboard. This first of its kind report can help raise the bar for local SDG leadership and we are glad to join other cities and nations globally in taking this important step. Hawaii is committed to doing its part to achieve these global goals through consistent engagement with our local community and the international community, especially all of our partners here in the Pacific. Inspired by the Micronesia Challenge, in Hawaii, we embarked on a journey to define a common set of goals for our many stakeholders to become more sustainable. We brought state and local government, our federal partners, businesses, and nonprofit organizations together to identify common goals. Together, we identified goals on clean energy, local food production, watershed protection, invasive species control, and green workforce and education, and creating smart, sustainable communities grounded in our host culture's values of over 1,000 years of indigenous wisdom and practices. We called this effort the Aloha Plus Challenge to push ourselves to achieve these goals with Aloha. And as a state senator in 2014, I sponsored the bill endorsing and supporting the Aloha Plus Challenge. As governor, my administration launched the Sustainable Hawaii Initiative to accelerate, accelerate state action on key priorities of the Aloha Plus Challenge. Now, as a recognized local 2030 hub, Hawaii is taking action on the global goals through our local SDG framework, the Aloha Plus Challenge, and is measuring our progress through an open data dashboard with community-driven metrics and indicators to hold ourselves accountable. We're proud that Hawaii was the first state to enact a law that aligns with the Paris Agreement and the first state in the country to commit to 100% clean renewable energy for electricity by 2045, which many other states like California have since adopted. Guam is also leading by example, and I congratulate you for becoming one of the first to adopt a goal of 100% renewable energy passed by your legislature and signed into law by Governor Leon Guerrero. With the economic impacts we are all experiencing from COVID-19, in Hawaii, we are doubling down on a clean energy economy, protecting our natural resources and creating more green jobs and education pathways and building smarter, more sustainable communities. Last week, I announced a program using Federal CARES Act funding that will support Hawaii's economy by providing businesses with up to 650 workers who have been displaced in the current economic crisis. The program will match displaced workers with companies in, in emerging industries and Aloha Plus challenge sectors such as conservation, renewable energy, agriculture, 
creative arts, aerospace, entrepreneurship, and STEM fields. And we'll be tracking progress on our recovery through the Aloha Plus dashboard, an open data platform that provides transparency and accountability on our commitments. While we look to chart where we go post COVID, having the voluntary local review gives us the opportunity to reflect on what we have accomplished to date, take our bearings and chart a course for a better Hawaii that we all want to see, as I'm sure other leaders like yourselves are also doing. As islands, we inspire each other. As we all know, the climate crisis is here and it affects all of us. We must find ways to come together. We are truly in one canoe and all connected, such as through the Global Island Partnership, of which we are a proud member. That is why today I'm pledging to enhance our collaboration with our island partners through the Local 2030 Islands Network and to work with the leaders of Guam, the Federated States of Micronesia, the Marshall Islands and Palau, and with the Micronesia Challenge and the Guam Green Growth by sharing what we've learned on our Aloha Plus dashboard to track progress and advance innovative data-driven approaches to critical sustainability challenge in our islands and beyond. The United Nations is that promise. The SDGs are our common language and green growth our call to action. Through the alignment of local, state, national, and international action, we can align our canoes in the same direction to help each other arrive at a more sustainable, equitable ro world for all of us. Congratulations on your important work with the Guam Green Growth Action Framework and mahalo for the opportunity to join you today. Thank you, Governor Ige, for your pledge and your remarks. We are honored you could join us today and thank you for being a leader in island sustainability. Now I'd like to welcome Kate Brown, Executive Director of the Global Island Partnership. Thank you. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings to you all. It's very difficult to follow that last group of very passionate and inspiring island leaders, but I will try. Uh, the Global Island Partnership, or GLISPA, which I am representing, is an island platform of high-level leaders and partners working together to catalyze political will to implement island commitments on sustainability, conservation, and sustainable livelihoods. We now have more than 45 members and hundreds of collaborating islands and organizations in the partnership, and we're proud to count the University of Guam as an institutional member, and one of our founding members is also involved in the G3 initiative, which is the Nature Conservancy. We're a partnership catalyzer and supporter in helping link islands to this broader sustainability movement. And I'm so pleased to be here, albeit virtually, for the signing of the G3, G3 Action Framework. Back when we started in 2006, we originally were a partnership focused on conservation and sustainable livelihoods. And we were the platform for the international launch of the Micronesia Challenge, led by the leaders in Micronesia, and the following Caribbean challenge, which was launched in 2008, uh, and the Aloha Plus challenge, which we heard from Governor Ige in 2014. And now we also have the best challenge, which is European islands in 2016. And we help each of these learn from each other, highlight progress, and share innovative ideas, policies, and practices. I was lucky to be at the launch of the Micronesia challenge in 2006. And I really saw firsthand the power that a group of island leaders leading the world in a new approach and specific commitments could have. This year, 2020, is the first endpoint of the Micronesia Challenge, and I hope that we can join in celebrating progress and highlight what needs to be done moving forward. We know that G3 and the efforts of Guam in this can provide inspiration for what is to follow in the Micronesia Challenge 2030. But GLISPA today has really expanded our mission um, from the conservation sustainability livelihood space. And partly that's because we were asked by our partners in Hawaii 
about 10 years ago to support their efforts to use the Asia Pacific Economic Community or APEC meeting um, to try and have better impact in the state, to shift from being a host of a, a meeting to ha doing, ha having an event that does something to deal with many of the intertwined issues that Hawaii was facing. And we heard many of those from Governor Ige. Out of this, two things really flourished. First was Hawaii Green Growth, and we'll hear about that later. Um, and the second is that GLISPA in 2013 asked Hawaii to show us what a green growth political commitment backed up with accountability, um, accountability measures would look like with the idea that like what the Micronesia Challenge did for conservation and sustainable livelihoods, Hawaii could do for the broader sustainability space. And we've heard from um, Governor Ige of what resulted, which is the Aloha Plus Challenge. And all of these are connected. And I think that's really important to remember. I was also at the launch of that political commitment, which happened actually at the SIDS meeting in Samoa um, at a GLISPA high level event. And I think, um, these types of initiatives, along with the ones in Micronesia, the Caribbean and the European islands, are really critical. I would like to acknowledge the leadership of Governor Ige in the Aloha Plus Challenge and the innovative nature of um, the dashboard. And also, thank you very much for your offer to share what Hawaii is doing with other islands. But each of these islands, led by islands, has been strengthened by other islands through GLISPA as the connective tissue each of these through incredible leadership and vision, and we strongly congratulate Guam and Governor Leon Guerrero, along with the University of Guam and all the local partners for being part of this broader family of islands, working together to transform our future. We look forward to what Guam will bring to the table in terms of innovation and new ideas that build on local and culturally appropriate knowledge. We look forward to a spirit of cooperation of cooperative competition. It's, it's time for Guam to be a bright spot for other islands in the same way that those other islands have supported your efforts. We want these important initiatives to succeed because they support our mission, which is to build resilient and sustainable island communities. Our vision is that island people can lead rich, fulfilling lives as determined by them in their islands, including future generations. This will be possible by continuing to build relationships between islands and also between island institutions. The global pandemic shows us the importance of this. And we look forward to working through our local 2030 islands network with Guam as an early leader, with our Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 hub to continue to build the network and surface and support other leaders and encourage others to come forward and work with us. We believe that islands are going to be the leaders of demonstrating SDG implementation to the world because we understand these issues deeply and because it matters. Thank you. For all the work you do with Anglispa and for connecting us islands together so we could achieve island sustainability, not only for us, but for the world. The University of Guam is honored to be a Glispa institutional member. Now I'd like to welcome Celeste Connors, Executive Director of the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub. Aloha, Your Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to share Hawaii's experience. I would like to congratulate Guam on today's signing of the G3 Action Framework to launch a 10-year strategy and for the great efforts of the G3 Working Group facilitated by the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and with the leadership of Governor Lulian Guerrero. Hawaii Green Growth is pleased to be able to partner with Guam on this exciting initiative. The Hawaii Green Growth Network includes over 150 public and private individuals and institutions in Hawaii committed to stewarding our precious natural, cultural, and human resources by advancing economic, social, and environmental goals. As Kate said, the Hawaii Green Growth Network launched the Aloha Plus Challenge inspired by the Micronesia Challenge as Hawaii's culturally rooted, locally driven framework with strong political leadership to implement the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The network convenes over 50 times a year to steward and accelerate the achievement of the six Aloha Plus Challenge goals. Hawaii's model builds on a legacy of indigenous knowledge, systems thinking, and island values. It builds on Hawaii's leadership on climate change and clean energy. And since our launch, and because of this unique connection of political leadership and vision, concrete goals and targets backed up by measurement processes, open for all residents to see and engage with, Hawaii is now recognized globally as a local 2030 hub. 
As indicated earlier, our history is rooted in the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation meeting in 2011 and with a focus on green growth, which came out of the 2008 financial crisis when members of the OECD committed to a green growth economic recovery. And this is an important point as we find ourselves in the middle of another social and economic crisis. With the COVID-19 threat and the already occurring impacts of climate change, a green growth recovery is needed more than ever to build back better, more sustainable, equitable, and resilient. As Governor Ige said, Hawaii's Aloha Plus Challenge and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals provide a framework for our recovery and insurance against future shocks. If we fail to take action within this decade, we will be confronted with an even greater crisis. These goals will help Hawaii and the global community keep our eye on the ball even as we grapple with this near-term crisis. The Aloha Plus Challenge is tracking Hawaii's economic recovery on the state website, demonstrating a commitment to transparency, accountability, and integrity. And we welcome the release of the Aloha Plus Challenge 2020 Bench Report, Hawaii's Voluntary Local Review, by Governor Ige and Senator Schatz last week. The report provides benchmark data showing where we are going, where we're doing well, and where we need to increase ambition to close the gap before 2030 during this decade of action. With GLISPO, we are committed to working with island partners through the local 2030 Islands Network, which brings together diverse set of island nations, states, and communities from all regions of the world. Islands tied together by their shared experience, cultures, strengths, and challenges. Members of the local 2030 Island Network agree on four principles. To identify local goals to advance the SDGs and strengthen long-term political leadership on sustainability and resilience. To strengthen public-private partnerships that support diverse stakeholders in integrating sustainability priorities into policy and planning. To measure progress through tracking and reporting. And to implement concrete initiatives that build island resilience and a circular economy, particularly at the water energy food nexus. Hawaii's green, Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub supports the Local 2030 Island Network through initiatives such as the Aloha Plus Challenge Dashboard, and I would like to reinforce Governor Ige's commitment to share what we have learned with Guam and other island partners, islands learning from each other. The Local 2030 Islands Network aims to promote island solutions and leadership based on shared island experiences and perspectives, and we strongly acknowledge and welcome Guam's membership in the Local 2030 Islands Network as an early island leader on SDG implementation. We encourage other islands to join us. Sometimes it can feel like islands as islands, we are pushed aside by major economies. However, as Governor Ige said, we are all in this canoe together. And if we speak with one voice, we cannot be ignored. Together, we can help bring an island worldview to the rest of the world. Thank you and mahalo for the opportunity to join you today at this very important event. Thank you, Celeste, for showing the way with the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub and for being a valuable G3 partner. More importantly, you're essentially our big sister in sustainability. Now I'd like to welcome Honorable Tina Munya Barnes, Speaker of the Guam Legislature. Thank you, Manana Sitsuas, and many of God's blessings to each and every one of you here. I'm Tina Munya Barnes, the Speaker of the 35th Guam Legislature, Governor Leon Guerrero, Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, President Kabua, Governor Igi, President Kreis, Dr. Austin Shelton, Director Connors, and Director Brown. Just being here with each and every one of you, I'm deeply humbled. But even better, I'm excited beyond belief to report that our blue continent, as you can see from all the representatives to here today, we are stronger. And we are stronger because we are together. From a grassroots perspective, I've been a public servant to uh, elected to serve the people of our island for seven terms now. And let me be the first to say that for a good portion of my career, there has been this misnomer that issues in Hawaii, Republic of the Marshall Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia, Republic of Palau, or even our brothers and sisters, just as stones throw away the Northern Mariana Islands is not our problem, not a problem of the people of Guam. Just a few weeks ago, we had one of my colleagues again, bringing up this argument that we should cut funding uh, for the Pacific Islands Development Bank because it's not Guam's problem. But this is not the case. 
this is not just about us. It's about all of us, all of us who call this blue continent our home. I have always stated and seen the results firsthand that for us to overcome adversities, we must do so together. Climate change, while some say it's a myth, as island nations, we see firsthand the implications to our food source, our sea levels, and ultimately, our people's ability to sustain a livelihood. Let me share a, a tidbit with you as my family and volunteers did several beach cleanups around the island the past year. I vividly remember growing up, playing at the beach, swifting the sand, where my siblings and I would find beautiful seashells and play with tiny crabs we called dukduks. But when we recently swifted through the sand, I found everything but seashells and dukduks. It broke my heart when we found syringes, broken beer, beer glasses, glass pipes, cigarette butts, can tabs, and other items too gross to mention. I realized that we could not put our hands through the sand without getting injured. We can continue to clean, uh, to clean up our beaches, continue to clean up our neighborhoods, but there needs to be a proactive approach to keeping our most valuable resource safe. This proactive approach begins with education, and this is it. For our decades, our environment has been neglected, and today we see the consequences. But today, we get to witness the start of this proactive approach. Today, we sign a 10-year commitment to ensure that the livelihoods of our future generations are protected. Today, our brothers and sisters across the blue continent are taking a stand. We stand in solidarity with a clear message. Our people, our natural resources, our environment, they matter to us. We will do all we can to make good to the land that has provided for us. And I want to end by sharing a lesson that my parents, Bill and Ann Munya, imparted on my siblings and I. Ina famalik. In the Chamorro language, inafa means to make and malik means good. In the practice, in practice, this is a system of interdependence where we take care of one another. Our people are resilient. We survived the unspeakable atrocities of World War II, but we did that because Inafa Malik was embodied in everyone who called our island Guam home. Today, I ask each and every one of you to go back to our roots, embody the spirit of Inafa Malik, and let's make good to our island nations, our environment, and most importantly, our people. And thank you for coming to the table to make our entire Pacific region, this blue continent, a better place for our, June, uh, for our future generations. And to G3, congratulations and great success. Sainama Asi on behalf of our people of Guam. Thank you, Speaker Munya Barnes, for your public service, your spirit of Inafamalik, and your support of the G3 Initiative and Action Framework. Now I'd like to welcome Honorable Joshua Tenorio, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. Half a day. I want to thank all of you for participating in today's event. I especially want to thank the University of Guam, including President Kreis, Dr. Austin Shelton, the Center for Island Sustainability, our G3 heroes, as well as all the government and community leaders, change agents, and community organizers that came together to advance our work. And there is more talent and leadership that we intend to engage and empower as part of this process. It was important to engage and empower the Center for Island Sustainability at the University of Guam to advance this effort and to institutionalize and ensure that this work is centered on policy, relevance, and responsiveness to our community. When we launched the G3 Working Group this January, 
We did so under the Guam Museum backdrop of words attributed to the ancient chief Hural in 1671. Tita nisis, tita nisis, Tita nisisita adudun sanhidun para tefen maulik guinigita nota. Tada tatlu. Satisfied with what our islands furnish us, we desire nothing else. The spirit of sustainability is deeply rooted in the people of Guam. And today, informed by our past and holding on to the island wisdom we hold dear, we take a big step forward to our sustainable future. Our vision is for Guam to be a safe and prosperous island, governed with compassion and deeply committed to fairness. We understand that we must inspire change from within and facilitate action throughout if we are to safeguard our environment, improve the socioeconomic well being of our people, and resolve the historical injustice of colonialism. We are ready to continue accelerating sustainability solutions through our G3 action framework and its five categories of action healthy and prosperous communities, educated, capable, and compassionate island, sustainable homes, utilities, and transportation, thriving natural resources and sustainable alliances. Cross-cutting elements are incorporated into all categories, climate action, resilience, public engagement, policy, and the core Chamorro values of respect, cooperation, and treating others with kindness, generosity, and dignity. The G3 Action Framework will guide our island's priorities to build back, to build back better and more resilient. After learning of the Global Sustainable Development Goals Movement, I was pleased to learn how islands are being recognized for their innovation and sustainability solutions that can be scaled globally. I am thankful our island brothers and sisters invited us to create an alliance through the local 2030, 2030 Islands Network. Partnerships remind us we can achieve so much when we come together and we work together. Our island worldview that our previous speakers mentioned is a beacon that resonates with the planet, our island Earth. From the Micronesia Challenge to the Aloha Plus Challenge, the Caribbean Challenge, and back again to Guam Green Growth Initiative, islands are truly helping islands. And I look forward to more shared solutions between the islands. Guam will be sharing our efforts to advance a circular economy. And G3 takes us beyond trash cleanups by developing solutions to waste issues. It will work to create new jobs and new green industries. It will turn waste into cash instead of landfills with trash. G3 is creating a circular economy market space, maker space, an innovative hub at the Chamorro Village, where entrepreneurs will be able to gather in maker space filled with tools and equipment to transform waste products into marketable products. In a time of business closure and rising unemployment, G3 G3 will give our people an ownership role in the new green economy and in the transition to a cleaner and more sustainable Guam. Our administration is also engaged in focused work through the Climate Change Resiliency Commission, the Guam Aquaculture Task Force, the Islandwide Beautification Task Force, and the Zero Waste Initiative. We thank Hawaii for their commitment to share their Aloha Plus Challenge Dashboard adopting the open data platform, which will support accountability and transparency of G3 goals and metrics that will inform island-wide decisions. Our administration is committed to advancing G3, our island's most comprehensive action plan ever created to achieve our sustainable future. I will continue to call upon the G3 working group to make advance the, to advances, to advance the framework and we will track our progress and adjust accordingly. We will work diligently to create our sustainable, equitable, and prosperous future. Thank you, and Sijus Maasi. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Tenorio. Your guidance, leadership, and support has made the G3 initiative more achievable. I'm confident that we could realize these goals for our island. And now is the moment we're all here for. The G3 Action Framework will now be signed into action by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio. I'll turn it back over to the Governor and Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Uh, I, it is actually an honor for me to write our agreement 
I mean, to read our agreement and to have it signed. September 23rd, 2020, the Guam Green Growth Action Framework, G3AF, is the most comprehensive plan ever created to achieve a sustainable future for Guam. It is a compilation of hundreds of goals, objectives, metrics, action items, action leads, and partnerships submitted by a 97-member G3 working group representing all the sectors of Guam's society. The G3AF is intended to serve as an overarching framework to guide and record government and civil society actions contributing toward the island's sustainable future. Goals and plans of 82 agencies, governing bodies, commissions, task force, nonprofits, and organizations are incorporated into the G3AF. The G3 working group members also identified gaps in coordination of action necessary to achieve sustainability goals and incorporated these into the G3AF. The framework will be a living document adjusted and adapted over time. The G3 action framework is focused on five categories of actions. One, healthy and prosperous communities. Two, educated, capable, and compassionate islands. Three, sustainable homes, utilities, and transportation. Four, a thriving natural resources. And five, sustainable alliances, cross-cutting elements are incorporated into all categories. Climate actions, re resilience, public engagement policy, and the core Chamorro values of respect, cooperation, and treating others with kindness, generosity, and dignity. Today commemorates both the one year anniversary of the local 2030 Islands Network launch and the promulgation of Executive Order 2019-23. Adopting the G3 Action Framework in 2020 also marks the start of the decade of action. The United Nations emphasizes that we are in a critical 10-year window to act on the most significant global sustainability challenges before 2030. With the backdrop of COVID-19 affecting economies, food systems, and the survival of our most vulnerable, G3 will aim to be an engine of solutions and innovation to help Guam build back better fairer, and more resilient. G3 is Guam's strategy to take local action to achieve global impact. On this 23rd day of September 2020, the Guam Green Growth Action Framework is signed into action. Congratulations! <laughs> Josh, are you signing? <laughs> Thank you again, Governor Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio. Now our program for the morning closes and our 10-year G3 action framework strategy begins. On behalf of the G3 initiative, I'd like to thank our honored guests and speakers for joining us today. We look forward to our continued partnership to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. And to all who have joined in today to learn more about the G3 initiative and action framework, we hope that we can work together to create a more equitable, prosperous, and sustainable future for our island home. Sizuas Maasi and have a great day.
ways to take fuller advantage of the connectivity among our islands. And the Marianas has, has a lot to contribute in terms of island wisdom. All of the things we need to achieve to fix climate change and everything else. It starts with the individual, you know, it starts with, with um, the individual. Crisis deepens, we need more than ever peace for community. Sustainability is an ancient wisdom. Thank you, my heart is full, everybody. Nothing it is going to happen unless we fearlessly drive change.